behind it, um, it just tends to get people going a little bit. So we are going to be talking today about a database assessment. Everyone should have a database assessment playbook in front of them. Playbooks are sort of a new thing that KW has been doing, and they're kind of a way for us to know what we need to be doing in the moment. There are things that are timeless in our industry that, you know, the MREA shift. I mean, these are timeless resources that we have. Um, and yet, in the shift, we have to come up with new strategies. And so these playbooks that KW has been putting out are current to what we're dealing with right now and how we can make the most of our business in what we're doing. So we're gonna just kind of go through this data, database um, assessment playbook. I do have some slides that we'll go through. We'll do a little bit of um, graphics as well. So Gary Keller, Jay Papazon, they always say your database is your business. Your database is your business. Um, the number of contacts that people have in their database right now has gone up. And why is that? Because what are we telling you to do? Feed the database. You hear it all the time. Well, the problem that we are finding is that, let's get a little graphic here. As I gave it to Rhonda because it's on the copy. There she is. She's got it. She's got it. So the problem is our number of contacts has gone up. You guys have killed it in that area. KW as a whole, we can see in command number of contacts is up. Ideally, number of touches should follow, right? What do you think's happening? Contacts are going up. Where do you think touches is falling? Way below. There. That's a problem. That's a problem. So what we have here is a gap. And what does this gap equal? <laughs> Income in your life. Income in your life. So we have the people, but we are not reaching out to them and touching them, contacting them as much as we should be for it to actually generate the income that we're looking for. So the database assessment is um, very simply a four-step model that we're going to be following. Step one, we're going to do some math. How many of you in here like math? Super. You are not my people. Um, but I'll let you do the calculations for us because you'll get it right. Um, number two, we're going to talk about how to slow our spend. The third thing we want to talk about is increasing the quality of our touches. And then last but not least, we hear this um, a lot with MREA. We want to inspect what we expect. Okay. So this is the model, and I know a lot of people with these playbooks, what they'll do is they'll actually take the model and they'll like laminate it and sort of keep it as a one page reminder of what am I supposed to be doing? So feel free to do that um, if that's helpful for you. We have an example under do the math. Anytime, uh, Gary Keller, Jay Papazon, uh, all of the, the, the head honchos with KW, anytime they're researching something, they painstakingly go to thousands and thousands of agents and collect all the data. And they're doing this from big top producers. They wanna know what's working and what's not working. That's how the MREA was created. And so in that same fashion, they wanted to actually figure out what is the value of a database. Have any of you ever calculated what is your database worth in a dollar figure? Yeah? Yeah. It's interesting when we start putting numbers to people and, and what it equates to be. So we're going to determine the value of your database from a cost perspective if you had to rebuild it today. If you were starting fresh today and you were putting all the people in and you were buying the leads you had to buy, we're going to figure out what that's going to cost you. Then we're going to determine your conversion rate 
And then we're going to determine your financial opportunity that's available to you. So um, KW talked to a specific team and sort of um, adopted their data for this example. So we have some real numbers to play with. In the example, they analyzed a database that had 15,000 contacts. Anybody in here, 15,000 contacts? No? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I like that answer, Val. I like that a lot. Not yet. So they had 15,000 contacts. I'm assuming we're talking about a team here, right? Like, let, let's be honest. Um, and they sold 221 units for 120 million in volume, okay? So these are the, the pretend numbers that we're going to be working with. Although I would challenge you to put your real numbers in here um, to come up with your calculations. So what they did was, here's our little, our little formula. They took the total number of people. You remember what the total number of people was? 15,000. And they multiplied it by the lead cost multiplier. What the heck is the lead cost multiplier? Well, they said, hey, what's the average cost of a lead right now? What's, what's happening out there? What are people paying? Uh, if you have been in command for a while, uh, I mean, I know two years ago, we could get leads on Facebook out of command for a buck 86 a piece. If you're, you know, Premier with Zillow, you're paying a lot more than that. But they sort of took the average spread over what everybody's paying for leads right now. And they came up with a number of about $26 a lead. If you know your number, use that. If you know exactly how much you're paying per lead, use that figure. But if you don't have one, use the $26. And then they said, if an agent gets out of the business, how many years does it take for their current database to sort of dwindle down that they are officially retired and they're not getting any calls any longer? they're done. Their current database will usually dwindle in about three years. They'll stop getting phone calls. They'll stop getting business. So three years is what KW came up with as the industry average annual cost multiplier. And when they do the math, when they did the calculations there, they came up with a value. So for this team, their database was valued at about $1.2 million. Well, that's not too shabby. That's not too shabby. Um, how many of you in here have 500 contacts in your database? Okay. So if you have 500 contacts in your database, right now, using these figures that KW's um, come up with, you have a database worth almost $40,000. Okay, how many of you have a thousand? Your database is worth about 78 grand. Anybody have 2000? Yeah, you're at about 156,000 that that database is worth. Anybody higher than that? Under three, okay. At 2,000, it's 156. And then I did 5,000 is almost 400,000 in value. So is it fair to say your database is your business? What else do you have in your business is that equates to $78,000 of worth? Signs? Mm -mm. doesn't matter how much you paid for them. They're only worth money to you. Nobody else is going to want them, right? Lock boxes. Pens you ordered from pens.com. Nope. So the main value of being in real estate is that value of your 
database. And I think when you realize that that has a real dollar figure associated with it, it helps to reinforce how important the models that KW gives us to work it are. It really reinforces that fact. Any questions so far? I would love, I would really challenge each of you to look in your database and do the math and just come up with that number and see what it looks like. And tell me if you get it, because I'd really like to know. The next step in the math is um, we have to figure out your conversion rate. Again, we're going to use the examples that KW gave us. So we're all on the same page. This particular organization had 15,000 contacts and they did 200. And I think the sample says 221 units, but when they did the sampling, they actually put 227. I'll just go with that to keep the numbers right. So 15,000 people. And in one year they did 227 deals. So we divide 227 by 15,000. That means they're converting at a one and a half percent rate. So out of the 15,000 people, they've got 1.5 to the closing table, 1.5%. Gary and Jay sort of brainstormed around, what do they think is an acceptable conversion rate? And it's not 1.5, 1.5 is low. So this team, there's definitely room for improvement. And through some calculations of the, you know, the average number of transactions that happen across the United States every year and how many people actually live in the United States, they did all the calculating and the formulating that um, I don't need to worry about doing. And they came up with a number that 6% really is like, you're killing it at 6%. And so for this transaction or for this training, they said, let's shoot for 4%. Use 4% as an average if you don't know what your conversion rate is. So 4% is the um, number that, that you can use for sample purposes. So if we take the 15,000 by the 4% database conversion that we should be doing, this team left, uh, or they should be doing about 600 deals and they only did 227. Let's assume that their average commission is $5,000 and they left 400 deals behind. Huh? a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of money left behind just sitting there. Just sitting there. So what are we going to what are we going to do about? The question that keeps coming up and you're going to hear this, you know, you'll hear this a lot I'm sure throughout the next year. Do we actually have a lead generation problem or a lead conversion problem? It's a lead conversion problem. You guys, agents as a whole, they've done exactly what we've been telling them to do. Lead gen, lead, lead, lead gen, lead gen. Put those people in your database. Get them in there, get them in there, get them in there. But then we neglected to tell you what to do with them. We ought to have a plan in place because otherwise, they're just sitting there. And do you think that your people are only in your database? So if we're not working them, who is? Somebody else. Somebody else. Yeah. So we have a lead conversion problem, not a lead generation problem. What do we do about it? How are we going to fix it? We need to, step two, slow the spend. Slow the spend. How many of you are running um, 
just like recurring ads. They just, every month, the same thing goes out. It just happens. People click, they go into your database, maybe through Google, Facebook, whatever. You're just running ads. Okay. Okay. In the past you have. Okay, good. Good. Um, if you have a really old database, what you might find when you start contacting people is numbers aren't right. Emails aren't right. If you're mailing stuff out, maybe addresses aren't right. So the people you have in your database that ideally you spent an average of 26 bucks a piece on, that data is no longer good. Has anyone ever used a skip tracing service to help update your database? Kyle's shaking his head yes. There's a ton of them out there. Um, you know, Brittany and I can give you some resources if you need them. You've paid money already for these people to be in your database in, in one shape or form. You, you, it could either cost you time or money to get them in your database. They're in there. If the data is not right, sometimes paying 50 cents per contact through a skip tracer or one of these database cleanup companies, the 50 cents you spend to get their info updated is better than the $26 you're gonna have to spend to go buy a new lead, right? So sometimes it's worth it to send them your list, let them do the skip tracing and update your information. Of course, we want all of this done in a TCPA compliant manner, right? Everybody knows what TCPA, everybody knows what TCPA is. Yeah. 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 Can, can I share our story from yesterday's meeting? Yes. Yeah, so um, we had a regional call yesterday and I was blown away by this. Like this really, it, it hit me hard when they said, the region said that recently KW as a whole got their hands smacked for not being TCPA compliant, for calling people who were on the do not call list. Gary Keller paid the fine. He didn't come to Matt and Dave and you know every every market center and say fork over a share. He paid it. Guess how much it was? Forty million. Forty million dollars. Happening like all over that this was an issue. Forty million. He paid it. I'm really confused. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. He's not passing the bus anymore. Thank you, Gary, for, for bailing us out this time. And you will be hearing us talking about TCPA probably as much as I talked about electronic EMDs. <laughs> so, yeah, well, yeah. Well, if somebody's in our database, presumably, we have their information because they gave it to us. And so if they gave us their information and we call them, is that maybe? Yes, if they're if it's a warm lead, they gave you permission to call and we can email TCPA compliant guides. So yes, if they raise their hand to be called, you can call them. Absolutely. It's when you're truly doing cold calling. Mm -hmm. So maybe you use a mojo dialer mm -hmm. and you circle prospect around an open house mm -hmm. and you get their phone numbers from the public records in mojo and you call that list, that's cold calling. You want to double check those phone numbers against the do not call registry. So, so that's they when you can get the phone mojo question back here about how do people actually uh, find that registry? Um, we'll we'll send out. There is a guide. The region put out a guide for us. And there is a website that you can go to. It's a national do not call registry list. And if someone is on there, just don't call them unless they've given you permission to call them. Whether that's giving you their contact information because they clicked on your email, that's one way that they can raise their hand. Um, or they told a friend to let you call, like, oh, you're already done with that. Right, like if they're your peer, they like know and trust you, they're okay. Mm -hmm. um, really, where it gets scary is when you are getting phone numbers from other sources, like you're buying lead lists, mm -hmm. call, 
they did not raise their hand or bind their information from the do call list. And they're on the do not call list. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So again, that's a whole that that is a whole other class in and of itself, and we are very aware of that. But when they told us that figure yesterday, I, I was I, whoa. So here's a, a weird question. Um, Cole Realty Resource, when you use that um, that tool, there's the functionality in there where you can also, if somebody has, like you will find people's email addresses as well sometimes or in lieu of their phone number. So, you know, I wouldn't personally do this, but... Um, following the same thought process as the TCPA, if you find that someone is on that do not call list, could you theoretically send them an email and not get your hands met? You know what, I will review the TCPA just to be sure. Yeah, I need to give guidance on it without comment. I mean, I, I think that's but the that's form, a great, you know, personally, but, but it's a great is it a workaround? Yeah. What does that stand for, since we figured that? And we know it's a do not call like, list, but what does that stand for? Something for telephone consumer protection. There you, there you go. go. There you go. Yes, I looked at that one. Okay, so again, I I don't want to spend the rest of our training on that topic, but I want you to know you're going to be hearing it. And anytime we are telling you to prospect, please assume that the words after that are in a TCPA compliant way. Please. She said about, I just want to add what she said about emails and the very first sentence under what this, it says regulates yeah. telemarketing calls, auto dialed calls, pre-recorded calls, text messages, mm -hmm. and unsolicited faxes. So, no. That's, so you would think email would be lumped into that even though they don't call it It doesn't say it specifically. Yeah. They don't yeah. Say email, but that's, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to be doing $40 million. Yeah. Yeah. You sure are. Because, because we as a brokerage, I mean, you are independent contractors, but we as a brokerage, is, we as a brokerage, it's our job to make sure you are educated. And if we're not telling you, then we're just as liable as, right. as the right. agent. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So we want to make sure that, that everybody's covered. So TCPA compliant phone calls, um, to the people that are in your database. One like aha I had um, from going through this data database assessment playbook, that is a mouthful. Um, a lot of people come to us, where can I buy leads? Where can I buy leads? Who can I buy leads from? Where can I get the best deal on the leads? So everybody, leads, leads, leads. Leads, leads, leads. <laughs> I want more leads. How many of you are actually calling the leads you have? Good point, Adrian. Like, <laughs> awkward, awkward silence in there. In slowing the spend, the aha I want you to take from, from me, if you listen to nothing else, the aha that I had from this class is, if you are not calling the people that are currently in your database, you should not be spending money on more leads, period. Uh, Op City, Zillow, Realtor, I don't care who what, who you're partnering with, how cheap it is. I don't have to pay it until closing. None of it. I, you have people in your database, work them. And the easiest way to systematically do that is to go into command or whatever CRM you use by choice. You know, you're not locked into command, but command will allow you to sort your contacts by date last contacted. I'm a little nauseous because I did my calculation based. Please, on please share, share. Darn it. <laughs> so when I take the number of people in my database times the stupid 4%, yep, which says I should be doing 75 units out of my database, that's sickening. <laughs> and it is you, sh sickening. you should have a I team, know, it does give me right? You, you should be on if your I way to an admin. With it, right? That's right. And that's what we're here. That's what we're here to, to figure out what to do. So command, I, I really appreciate you sharing that number, Val. Like that's what we're looking for, putting a real number to it. Sort your contacts by the date last contacted. This will only work if you actually make the notes that you contacted them. 
right? So the more data we feed into command, oh, I sent an email, oh, I sent a text, I made the phone call, here's what we talked about. The more data you feed to command, the more helpful command can be in this process. And if you're not using command and you have another system that, that works and you can do the same thing, super, keep doing that. Then the next thing we want to do is sort it by descending order. So go to who hasn't heard from you for the longest period of time. Who has not heard from you for the longest period? And guess who we're going to start with? Those people. The poor people that haven't heard from you. And again, we're going to do that very compliant. What is the one thing you're, the one word you're afraid of hearing when you make those phone calls? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, class over. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Any other words you might be afraid to hear? Not interested. Not interested. Put that in one word. No. Right? That's none of us want to hear that. I mean, in any way. Right? Just no for now. So reading that that list. Um, so if you're starting wherever you're starting, yep. if the people are already in your database and that says using TCPA, do we technically have to worry about that? If they are on the do not call list, if they're already in our database? We're going to send out the resources okay. for all the TCPA stuff. Okay. I promise. We're going to make sure you have everything. You have everything that you'll need for that. They already had their phone number. It was. You'll have everything you need to stay compliant. I promise. Okay. But I also am going to keep saying it every time we talk about making calls. It's just going to be part of my, my new conversation. Yep. But we will make sure you have every resource you need. So what are we going to say when we call? Are you interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate? And what are they going to say? No. So let's flip the script. Let's change the conversation. I love this. This is, this is what we say. What's your real estate plan for 23 and 24? What can't they say? No. That's not an answer. That's not an answer. Yeah. What's your real estate plan for 23-24? Val, what's your real estate plan for 23-24? Have you so glad I called. <laughs> have you been paying attention to what's going on in the market? Yeah. I can't imagine that I would find anything that I would want for the price I'd want to pay. Interesting. Do you have a number in mind on what it would take to sell your house? To get you to move? You mean what my house is currently mm -hmm. worth? What you would want for it? That's a reasonable idea. Okay. Would it be worth your time for me to come sit down and chat with you, take a look at the place and see if it might be something you want to explore? Maybe. Yeah. Just, just might be said, I don't want to move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. My house is denied. Uh, Have you ever thought about investing with that? Have, have, who do you know? Who do, who do you know? Who do you know? But what it does by by using this, what does this start? Right? It starts a dialogue. I think Julie Hess does like a well, you need to do a financial advisor every year, right? And that's, that's mm. really I'm here to help you understand what analogy. your what your is worth doesn't mean you have to sell but you should have an update on what your mm -hmm. biggest asset is worth because there might be equity in it that you could use to to renovate or to buy an investment property or maybe you have kids college, college. there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that that equity can do for you mm -hmm. yeah to help us take care of right? yeah yeah this takes me back to game strength mm -hmm. last week uh -huh. and about when we are making these calls, every call isn't about asking for business. Nope, it's that's about, right. It's about building connecting relationships. And so if you're if you're just calling and hoarding them, basically, then we don't even have to worry about a no. No, 
No, because all you're doing is making that connection and then you're going to go in command. You're going to update the date that you last contacted them and that person, it, they had a touch. And it may not be business now, but as Leah just said, it's, it's, it's a no for now. But if you're not ta talking to them about anything, somebody else is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask to share a conversation that she and I had recently. Um, we were talking about this exact thing, somebody that I hadn't talked to in a very long time. And they were a past client. And, you know, you feel really guilty because you haven't checked in in a while. And Dave had one approach, you know, where he apologized and apologized. And I said to him, I'm so afraid to call because I haven't talked to these people in forever. They're going to be like, you know, why, why, why are you even bothering? And what did he say? Like, okay. Well, I said, basically, you don't have to apologize because chances are they don't realize or nope. care how right. Exactly. exactly. That's exactly right. They are not sitting at home thinking, and Val hasn't called me. Right. And Because so, guess what? Their life is happening. And so simply saying, how are you? you know, That's all you need to do. So much has transpired in the world since yep. we last talked. How are you? How are you? How are you? And, and when, then sort of. When COVID hit, what was the Adele script that we got? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> It's me. You know, I, that's, that's like the, I mean, that's, that, that was the COVID script. Jason Abrams threw down our throat. Right. Call your people and just say, hello. That's all they want. That's all. Exactly that's right. it. But if you're afraid of that no, which a lot of us are, because no doesn't feel good in most cases, don't give them the chance. What is your real estate plan for 23 and 24? Start the dialogue. Start the conversation. All right, um, so slowing the spend. I, I feel like we've we've sat in this one for a, a little bit, you know, maybe maybe too long. Maybe I, I beat this dead horse, but. Um, I think it's just great realization though that we're in a shift. Mm -hmm. The market is high. So we should be cutting back expenses and yet you don't want to cut back the things that are giving you the return. Right. And yet the yeah. biggest thing I think with the return, and Dave confirmed this last week as well, yeah. is our database. And I know that we grow as a leadership team. We throw lots of bells and whistles at you because we just want to make sure you have all the tools in your tool belt. But before you add on lead generation pillars, which they say you should have four, right? But before you add on another three, you really should have your database dialed in, like focus on literally, database, literally okay. dialed yeah. in, literally, literally. dialed in, TCPA dialed in. <laughs> fully set up. You've got your smart plans running. Your touch program is running, and now you're just adding people to it. That's when you can add a second pillar. And then when you've got that dialed in and that's running really well, then you add a third and you repeat until the fourth. I think what we tend to do is we go to these trainings, which is great, yep. but then we're like, oh, I'm going to implement this and I'm going to implement that. And next thing you know, you have 10 lead gen pillars and you're only doing all of them at an okay level. Mm -hmm. it's it, it, yeah. 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 Throw all the bells and whistles to the side until your database system is working. And then add on another. There was a post in Twitter just over the weekend that somebody posted this month and it said relationship is the currency that builds your society. Mm. And Amen. Yep. You know, work. Yep. Mm -hmm. Once you've done this, then as Brittany just said, we just want to make sure that we have them on a follow-up plan. Are they on a monthly neighborhood nurture? Are they on a saved search? Are they on our quarterly call plan? Do we have them labeled and, and tagged properly that they're going to get the follow-up that they deserve? Now, I am going to throw something out here, and I would say that this is probably for, um, you know, people who are considering uh, maybe building a team, something of that nature, and there will be more training coming um, on this in the future. 
But one thing that the database playbook does talk about is hiring an ISA. And so if and when you get to a point where it's time, you can't handle the volume uh, effectively, then it might actually be time to consider an inside sales agent. And if and when that time comes, there's a whole playbook for that too. That will, will walk you through the process. Are you ready? Do you have the funds available? Do you have the business for this person? And are you in a place where you're going to be able to supervise and manage what they're actually doing? Because that's, that's a, a big part of that process. Okay. Next up, we're going to step three. We want to talk about increasing the quality of our touches. So daylight savings times comes around. Are any of us sending out a smart plan that says, don't forget to change clocks? No, because everybody does it. The last thing that most people that I talk to, don't send me that. Everybody does it. How, how many people in today's world actually have a clock that needs to, or needs manually reset? Right. That's my, that, there are a few. Yeah. There are a few. Uh, there are a few, but you know, if it, they do not need reminded to change their clock. So if you're doing that, stop that, please. They do not need that. We have to find a way to touch our database, but to make it worth something to them. It has to provide some sort of value or it's take me off your list. Please stop sending me these. Please stop calling me. We want to find um, touches that are needed and useful. There's a, there's a cute example in the uh, playbook. So Anna is an agent and she used to send out, hey, it's time for spring cleanup postcards. Where do you think they ended up? In the spring cleanup, right? <laughs> it went in the trash can. So what can we do? that would be something useful and needed to remind people to do spring cleanup. Well, Anna got 15,000 leaf and lawn, lawn and leaf, oh, yeah. lawn and leaf bags. She had 15,000 printed up and I, I can't really read what it says, but you know, something about if, hope this helps. You gotta clean up anyway, I hope this helps. She handed them out, distributed them wherever, put them, put them wherever. That's useful. Like that's useful. And relatively inexpensive. Relatively inexpensive. There are 70 different ideas on how to have quality touches to our people at the end of this. Don't don't go look now. Don't go look now. But at the end of this book, there is a list of 70 different ways. I know, right? It's like, don't push the button. <laughs> All you want to do is push the button. Yeah, 70, 70 different ways. They've given you 70 ways to touch your database that is useful. Meanwhile, there are only 50 ways to leave your life. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> we had the food. The food is what kicked up the energy. Yes. It was, it was the food. I didn't even have any caffeine. <laughs> so I do want to go back to something Brittany was saying, because I think this is really, really important. Hear me on this. We offer a lot of trainings. We offer a ton of things for you to do, resources, all the, all the things. And in that same way, you now have in your hands a list of 70 different ways you can reach out to your people. Pick one. Pick one. Do it and do it well. Otherwise, we get analysis paralysis, right? Well, it's all the things. I want to do all the things. I want to help these people with all these things. They're great ideas. I just, I'm going to do this and this. No, pick one. Pick one. Just pick one and implement it. And time block when you're going to implement it. Time block when you're going to implement it. Anyone have any like 
ideas that, that, you know, quality touches, anything that they can think of that would be something needed and useful that they could do for their clients. No cheating. Love it. Love it. My Neighborhood Nurture. It's free. It's in command. If you don't know how to set it up, if you don't know how to use it, that's what I'm here for. I think it was a bi monthly. Yeah. 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 Command has tons of resources that can be needed and useful that won't cost you a penny. And if you need help with that, I'm here for you. I used to do, um, I love to do top buys. And that's one of my favorite things to do. And I would partner with um, a lender that I typically work with. And for back to school season, we would drop off like, I think it was pencils or markers, like basically school supplies for all the families. Sure. And then for people that didn't have kids, we would just get them like dog treats if they had a dog or something. But it was always like a back to school type thing. Wow. Love it. Uh, and like pencils, you can get the boxes of pencils for really inexpensive. Yeah. But... Yeah. I did throw up a few ideas. Um, golfers, host a golf tournament. Make it a charitable event, you know, give give back. That's a, I mean, that's a win-win. Host a shredding party. For, you know, call in one of the shredding companies. Two, two to four hours, let people bring their shred in. Wine tours. You don't have to do that for your whole database, but pick your pick your top four clients and set up a, a wine tour. <laughs> Brittany, Brittany gets an invite to all wine tours, please. Um, home services, window washing, you know, landscaping, lawn mowing, driveway ceiling, whatever. Do you think it would be a value if you just had a list of um, all the vendors that you recommend, and you don't have to pay for these services, but send that list out to your people. Here are vendors I recommend. I, you know, sure would, sure would. Wow. And they would drink not in their pool, yeah. they would drink their own little splash pool yeah. and have like the little dog the food stuff, you know, little treats for the dogs, things like that. And people would bring their dogs and have doggy day fun. I'm telling you, it was always a really big turn up. Like yeah. the drive yeah. what it whatever. Every month. I'm thinking like Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. People love their animals, yeah. Sometimes more than my kids. Oh, spouses, kids, whatever, you know. <laughs> Same thing. But we're going to avoid analysis paralysis by choosing how many things? One. One, 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 one please. And then the last thing that we need to do as we analyze our database is inspect what you expect. So as the business owner, you are responsible for your database. You are the, the direct reason that it exists, if, you know, if, especially if you're a rainmaker. But you, as a business owner, are responsible for your database. If you're contracting it out, you know, lots of people use different, um, uh, I'll use the word subcontractors or different resources to have people update the database and mail things out. And, you know, we hire our cousins and our nieces and our friends and, you know, can you do this to my database? It's all fine and good. And you are responsible for it. If the data is not right, if it's not being updated properly, that's absolutely on you. So if you have people working for you in your database, which is worth money, it is up to you to inspect what you expect. Every lead in your database, um, especially ones that haven't been contacted in a long time, reactivate them. Get them on a 12 days of gain plan. Every active buyer, make sure that they are on an automated property search or a monthly neighborhood nurture. 
Uh, same thing with listings. Make any, you know, anybody looking uh, to list their home, make sure they're on the monthly neighborhood nurture. If they're just a contact in your smart plan, put them on a newsletter. I forget the name of the creator. Kim Burbolton. Um, I we have a, a video on our Facebook page. Uh, I show you how to implement Kimber's um, newsletter plan. It's all the work is done for you. You just have to put the plan in your database and then assign people to it. And she has newsletter, new monthly newsletters already created. The graphics are there. Everything is done. Set it and forget it. <laughs> There is a search in Penning. It's not as detailed as Bright. So depending on what they're looking for, I would say, you know, the one in command is great for those buyers who are just kind of browsing and don't have a specific criteria. But once they're in that spot, like I want to buy yesterday and they have specific criteria, that's when it's going to be bright. If you need help with that, let me know. And that was like, that was my way to get a buyer consult. So, hey, I kind of want to say search. I kind of have an idea of what you're looking for, but now that you're really serious to try to turn care of you got pre approved, let's get together so I can really fine tune that search and make sure I'm putting in these homes that truly fit your needs. And that's what helped me kind of convert them to that consult to get them to sign a buyer agreement. We're going to sort that database every day. So when you come in, do, or it comes time for lead gen time, whether you're here or at home, sort your database. Look at who's recently active. If you send out a smart plan and they open the email, they click on a link, they go to your website, they download your app, they search on your app, all those things that they do feed into your command platform. And so if you click recently active, you can see who's looking at my stuff. Oh, I might want to call them today. Where do you find leads to show up to? It, it's yep, it, in, the, in the contacts, you can sort by recently active. Make sure everyone is on a quarterly phone call smart plan. When you pull up command every day, Whatever tasks are there based on the smart plans that you have rolling, do it. Just do it. And if you care for your database, it will take care of you. And if you don't, they will go. Sure will. Or another agent in here might. Yeah, and to add to my logic. Just talk to her. So I'm like, average commission. Yeah. She buys a house and it's 75 people that I should have sold. Yep. What's what you? 450. Oh. Right. 450. That's not bad. Yeah. I'll never forget when Erica Walls did it. It was, it was like over a million. Yeah. I remember that. Commission. I remember that. That was sitting in her desk. Yeah. Is it easy? <laughs> That's like, I know. Okay. But is it simple? It is not easy, but it is simple. I know it's that dis that that D word, right? Discipline, man. Discipline does make you freedom. So the last couple pages, and if you want to turn there now, it's okay. But these are the um, unique touches, ways that you can reach out um, to your people and provide something that is needed and has value to it. Please. Please, please, please. So last week I did a um, <coughs> Facebook post on just my regular personal page. Um, and all it said was the top of it was unlocking value, what real estate agents do for buyers and sellers. I had seven people like my thing. I got two appointments out of that. So did what did you do? They made a comment on my post and I reached out to them and I have an appointment tonight and an appointment tomorrow. So oh. and that's the beauty in social media. Like if you post but don't respond, it's just an opinion. If you yes. 
call or message the people that are liking and commenting, that's LinkedIn. Yes, a hundred percent, yes. So real quick, one thing that, um, that in my training for this, one thing that I heard that I was like, oh, we have chosen, we all chose to be here. We chose to be in a database-driven business. Are you willing to do the things necessary to make your database work for you? That's either going to require you spend time or money on your database. Which one is it going to be? We have to spend time or money making sure that our database is worked. Time. I think it, we have one minute. And if you have to go, I completely respect that. I would love to, from both Brittany's um, training and this class, I would love just a few takeaways, some, some, I'm going to go and do this or, whoa, that was a big aha for me. I think we know, we know Val's wow. already, but. Oh, I, I know what I'm saying. You know, takeaway for me is, you know, I, I get caught up sometimes in process, which is so not me because I am so undisciplined, but I get bogged down sometimes in thinking, database isn't up to date. I should, you know, spend time making sure everybody's in there correctly, et cetera. If I would just stop and take even a half an hour every day and do that sort on the descending lane. Who, who haven't you talked to? Right, which is probably the dumbest thing. Right. Um, start there, you know, or start at using the, the DCD2 and just start there. It's a place to start. How many of you in here are familiar with the DTD2? Less, less than half the class, which is a very, um, uh, it's an amazing opportunity. DTD2, dial through the database. That, do, do the database. Twice. Dial, dial the database twice. Twice. So, if you have a list that's out, I'm an alphabetizer, right? We like to see things al alphabetized. I can't, because I don't know what it is. <laughs> Do the database twice. <laughs> or two, C2. C3PO, I don't know. So if we alphabetize something and we start at the top, how far do we usually get before something takes us off track? D, maybe a, maybe a E. Maybe an F. I... <laughs> so the problem is if every day we start at that top of that database and we start with A's, whether it's the last or the first name, who cares? You start with the A's, you get to the D's, and then the next day, well, something happens, and so you don't do any. And then the next day you come back, starting at the A's again, I guess, because you don't remember where you left off. So the DTD2 gives us specific letters of the alphabet to call in a very systematic way so that we are not so that the poor Z's aren't left hanging. Cause that's what happens, right? That though, I'm a W, don't forget about me, right? Like, come on. So that's why we, KW came up, somebody brilliant came up with the DTD2. It's a systematic way to make sure that the entire alphabet gets called and we don't have people um, that are missed. Yes, Rhonda. So we post that DTD2 yep. schedule and we made tags for each of the letters. I'm like, somebody else I know just did that. We need to have a whole class on DTD2. Apparently. And, and oh, speaking of which, speaking of which, all of this, everything that's been discussed, if you need a starting point, if you need a jump start, if you need a momentum pusher, the program that KW offers to get through this whole plan is called Bolt. And Bolt is coming up 
in October. Specific dates are. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And if if you don't have 201 contacts in your phone, come see me. And by the end of the day, we'll make sure you have 201 contacts in your phone because you know 200 people. Yeah. You know 200 people, we will get them in your phone and you'll be all ready for bowling. Yep. I need I need another takeaway, another I'm going to go and do this to I just need to know we we did something good today. What are you thinking? I love it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Love it. So if anybody here is in PC, I'm in PC tomorrow from 11 to 1130. We're doing smart plans. That's level one. That's level one. And then on Thursday in the level two class, if you happen to be in level two, we're going to be doing how to generate QR codes to drive traffic to your, to your website. Because John Olsh told everybody that I would do that for them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm like, oh, let's just do a class instead of me doing it eight times. Well, maybe. It's very easy. I promise you, it's it's not. It's super simple. Love it. Yeah, for sure. Questions, concerns? If you have to go, please go. Value and needed. Yep. Can I share something I missed? <laughs>